Welcome back everybody. In this tutorial we are going to talk about Java classes. It's going to be a two-part tutorial with the first part discussing the structure of the Java class and then the second part being how to use the Java class in a program. So if you see everything inside the Java class is inside these curly braces and this is something that is I think unique about Java that everything has to be declared within this class block. You have other programming languages like Python or C that can declare things outside of a class structure and the program works just fine. But the way Java was engineered was to uh, work inside of a class structure. Everything is inside of a class structure. And if you go back to the beginning tutorials that we had, even those, uh, everything was done inside of a class. Nothing was done outside the class. And even if you try to put something out here, so if we were to go int i equals uh, zero, then it's still going, it, it's just gonna be red. It's just going to say that it doesn't know what's going on here because it's outside of the class structure. Um, if we move this down into the class, then it's fine. It, it, it treats it just like a class field and it's good to go. A uh, side note, if you want to know how to move lines of code like I did just here, just hold down Alt and the up and down arrow keys and you can place that wherever you want. And then another uh, hotkey is Control D to cut a line out. So those are just um, helpful tools to, to keep in mind. So everything has to be done inside of this class structure. So the first thing that we have inside of our class is we have these two variables that are class fields. We have number of sides and value. And we see that we have indicated that these are private fields. So the reason why we have private fields is because in uh, software development, there's two key principles that you kind of want to maintain whenever you're developing software and those two key principles are high cohesion and low coupling and what that means basically high cohesion is work working well together every class every part of your code works well together um, then low coupling is if I change something it's not gonna break so I want to be able to have uh, the ability to swap things out to change things and it not wreak havoc on the code in other areas and the way we do that is by um, y using getters and setters methods to access things that would otherwise be private so here we have our fields that are private like value which is going to hold the value of the dice but the only way that other classes can see this value is through this get value method and the reason we want to re we we want to make them go through the method rather than just give them access to this variable is because one they can't change the value of the variable like if we made this public then they would just be able to come in here and change the value to whatever they want and completely bypass our role method they could change the value and the other thing that uh, that the getter value that the getter method allows us to do is we can change the logic within this method without it breaking the code uh, elsewhere so if we want to change how this value is is calculated what it's doing inside this method we can do that and all the places that call the get value are still going to be able to access this no problem so it allows us that low coupling aspect where everything's still working together and we can we can unplug things plug things in no problem so we have that high cohesion low coupling so that's just one of the the two things that uh, you want to keep in mind when you're writing software so after the um, uh, these these fields, and one other thing that I'd like to talk about is scope. So we haven't really discussed scope, I don't think, uh, in the other previous tutorials. So there's four types of scope that you can declare on your your fields, your uh, constructors, and your methods. And basically, the the four types are public, private, protected, 
and default. So private here we just talked about. Public is basically open to anything within the, the project scope. And then uh, there's also protected and default. So default, if I just didn't have anything, if it was just int, uh, num sides, number of sides, this would be default and default is package level scope. So everything within this package would be able to see it. But if we declared a package, another package, all the classes that are in that other package would not be able to see it. Then uh, protected, uh, and we'll get into this in, in other tutorials. Protected is for inheritance. When you have a class, one class that inherits from another class, all of those classes will uh, inherit any any fields or methods that are set as uh, protected so we have our feet we have our fields here the next thing you see is our constructors and we have two constructors we have a constructor with no parameters and then we have a constructor with one parameter now if we didn't have any constructors if we just like cut these out and we just didn't have a parameter java would still work it would make you a default parameter with no arguments so that you could still make an object of this class. Now, the interesting thing about that is if we come along and we we only have this method, this uh, constructor that has an, a parameter, Java will no longer make the default one for us. So it, it just something to keep in mind when you're making these constructors. Whenever you make a constructor with a parameter, you just need to go ahead and make the default constructor as well. Make the constructor that, that has no um, parameters so that we don't run into issues where we call a no parameter instructor and then it's not there for us to use because Java didn't, Java didn't create it for us. So... Those are, those are the, uh, the constructors and basically when we instantiate an object it's coming in here depending on if we give it a parameter or not and it's it's whichever one we pick is what it's going to do and you can set the logic for how you want this object to, to, to be uh, initialized so in in our um, our constructor with a parameter here when we pass in a number of sides let's say we, we create an object of, of the die class with three sides then it comes in here and it sets the number of sides this this field here to three so that's what that constructor is doing when you, when we're making an object, and we'll see more of that if you're if you're kind of curious of like what is he talking about making an object. We'll see that in in the to in the tutorial with uh, using the class in uh, the program. So the next two things that we see down here are the methods that we have. We have a role method, and we have a get value method. The role method basically generates a random number and then assigns that random number to our value. So it's to our value field. Again, it's set to private, so it's only being set in this role method. So we have to call this role method, and then we call the get value. So uh, you'll notice that I have a plus one here. So what it's doing is it's saying it takes the number of sides, whatever we whatever we declared when we, when we uh, initialized our object of, of the die class, and we gave it a number of sides, whether it's three, four, five, whatever, then it will come in here and it will take that number that we assigned it and it will give us a random number from zero up to, but not including that number. So if it's six, it'll go zero to five, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So if we actually want what, what we would normally see in a die, we have to add that one to it. So zero becomes one, one becomes two, two becomes three, and so on and so forth. And uh, that's just one thing to keep in mind when you're when you're using these these random functions that it's gonna go, it's gonna start counting at zero. So if you want it to be something that you would normally find in a real world setting, you're gonna have to add that one to it. And then uh, again, this uh, this get value is how we get is how we share access to that number for the rest of the program. The uh, the last thing that I wanted to, to talk about in this tutorial real quick are these comments because I don't think I've covered comments in, in the other tutorials. And so a single line comment here is just two forward slashes. So you can make any line a comment by hitting two forward slashes in front of it. And so we have two forward slashes here. 
um, this right here is a comment, is a block comment for what they call Java docs. So the way that you set these up, and I'll, I'll kind of do it down here to kind of show you that it auto um, uh, adds this return value. So if you do forward slash and then two asterisks, then hit enter, it will set this up for you and you can type as much as you want here. And every time you hit enter, it's just gonna add another line. And so that's, that's different from the single line where if we just had a single line and we were doing something and then we hit enter, it's no longer gonna be a comment. So just kind of keep that in mind. And so what the Java docs are for is when you release your program to the world and, and are uh, allowing other people to use your software, the Java docs allow people to see exactly how the the program is supposed to be used. You can give people information on what it's used for. And I understand that these are very simple examples that, that really don't need a lot of explanation. But in a, in a much more complicated program that has a lot of logic, you're going to need uh, these helpful hints to see, okay, what is this uh, method doing? What is it returning? Uh, how do I call it? What, you know, are there any parameters that, that it takes? And, um, so this, this is just kind of helpful as you develop your software for other people to use. So that kind of wraps it up with uh, the, the class structure of this, and we will get into how to use this in the next video. So see you then.